If you have your Bibles this morning, I'm going to preach a, a message about fear. I'm going to preach a message about fear. I, you know, we've got this uh, holiday that the world seems to celebrate in a negative way. Uh, and, and a lot of times we'll shy away from Halloween because of the negativity and the satanic uh, uh, array that might be happening. This Hallow's Eve, if you will, seems to be a, an, uh, an item that we veer away from because we're, we're spiritual than that. The Bible says that we're in the world, but not to be of the world. And that's not to say that we have to take on the role of the, the, the spiritual uh, negativity of this or the evil of it. You know what? We can worship the Lord and serve the Lord in this opportunity. Instead of leaving your light off and growling when kids come by. I had one guy that said, hey, pastor, I'm, gonna, I'm so negative against Halloween that I'm going to put one of those. Every time a kid brings my door, I'm going to put a shock thing on it. So it'll shock them. I, I'm thinking, my goodness. And here's what I'm going to tell you something. Wouldn't it be nice when a person or a little kid comes to your door? They're just happy to get candy. That's all they're happy to get. Give them a piece of candy. Tell them God blesses you as you drop that candy in. If you want to go to the store, I've got some tracks over here. You can give them a track that says trick or treat. God will never treat, trick you. He's always willing to treat you with the best that he's got. And it's just a simple little track. You can tell them God bless you and, and, and have fun. Be safe. There's nothing wrong with that. And, and, and if you will do that, listen, somebody said, well, that's celebrating this holiday. No, you're not. You're giving candy to kids. Brother Farr does it all the time, and he's not evil, I don't think. <laughs> it is an opportunity for us to show the light of Jesus Christ in a world that's covering up with darkness. And let's, let's touch the world with love instead of negative circumstances. And let's reach out and show the love of Jesus Christ. Amen? That's what it's all about, is making that difference and making that impact. Amen? God, but if you have your Bibles, turn with me. We're going to see, and, and go, go back one more time. Robert's so fast. Uh, 2 Timothy, the first chapter, verse 7. We're going to be preaching from there. We're going to talk about a spirit of fear. Do you know that doctors are getting rich because of your phobias and fears? Doctors are making a lot of money off of counseling and, and they're working with a lot of things. We, we have prescriptions of, on top of prescriptions of phobias and fears that seem to be riddling the world about all the circumstances that, that we're afraid of. How many of you know something right now in your life that you're afraid of? Be honest, come on. I'm afraid of snakes, I don't like snakes. I'm afraid of sauerkraut. <laughs> But, we're all, you know, there, there's nothing wrong with being afraid of something. Some of you may be afraid of the person sitting close to you today. Amen. You may, you may be sitting here afraid of them. I, I don't, that may be the case. We're all, we've all got fears. And sometimes those fears seem to drive us to a negative thing. And we let those fears. The Bible tells us that God has not given us a spirit of fear. I want you to think about that this morning as I preach this message. And I, I want you to go with me now, Robert, if you will, to that text. If you have your Bibles, turn with me. If not, it's up on the screen. 2 Timothy, the first chapter, verse 7, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. This morning I want to speak just a few minutes this morning about overcoming our fears. I don't want to look at this this morning and be able to describe it. God didn't, if God didn't give us a spirit of fear, then I ask you this morning, where did fear come from? If God did not give us a spirit of fear, now that word spirit of fear is something that you need to look at. If God did not give us a spirit of fear, but he gave us a spirit of love and of joy and of a sound mind. And all of those things being decided, I want us to look today a little bit at that, that idea of who gave us that, I, that, that spirit of fear. Where did it come from and what source brought it to us? I, I want us to look at this. Fear is a learned trait that we use to protect ourselves. It is a learned trait. We, we create our fears. It's, it's something, it's a mechanism. It, it's the same kind of concept that we learn when, you know, uh, we are not born with the instinct of hatred but hatred is a learned habit hatred is something that we acquire racism 
is not something we're born with. We, are, we learn it. It is, it, is, it is a lot of times that they say you can blame it on society, you can blame it on situations, but I will tell you something. In the same mindset, fear is learned. Fear is a learned mechanism that we do. Now, I can tell you something uh, to overcome those things. We're going to talk about it in just a little bit, but you can overcome anything that Satan has attacked you with. Because if God didn't give you this spirit of fear, it came from the source of the enemy. And we've got to overcome that spirit of fear. I want us to look this morning at how to define fear and what the definition of fear. I pulled up my Google on my phone. If you want to go there, you can go to your Google, but just come right back with us. It says, fear is an anxiety or an agitation caused by the presence of danger, evil, pain, dread, or fright. There's another one that I found, and it goes along more with our scripture today, and it says to show awe or reverence of something or someone. You see, the Bible tells us that fear is also a learned place that we reverence God. The Bible tells us that we are to fear God, and the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. We understand that, and we can begin to look at that, because if fear is a tra train mechanism that's brought within us, then we learn to reverence God. Let me tell you why a lot of the children don't reverence the house of God, is because we teach them not to. Still love me? They need to respect it. They need to turn, they need to realize and reference both God and the, his properties. Amen? They need to learn that. They need to learn to take care of that. It's a trained mechanism that's born, it's not born within us. We learn it. Now go ahead and pull the next one up. Some of the things that, that fear can be good for, and sometimes fear is that. The first thing that we see is Psalms 111, verse 10. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Go ahead and pull the next one up. The Proverbs 1 and 7 says this, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. I like these next ones. They're found in the New Testament. Jesus speaks, and he begins to tell us, about how to overcome fear and what fear is. Jesus says in Matthew 10, 28, it says, Do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. In other words, that fear can be interchanged. There's two words there that represent fear. If you go back to the original translation, there is one that do not fear, do not be afraid of, don't be afraid of the things of this world, but it says rather fear or reverence or respect God. You see, see here's what we do is we, we get those two mixed up. Because it's a learned mechanism. We're not afraid of God. That's what the world is. They're not afraid of God. They're not, they're, they, they think that God, is, sometimes they even make God out to be a joke. They use his name in vain. They, they take the, his criticisms and they, and they mock him in, in all different ways. And they're not a, they're not, they don't fear God. You don't have to be afraid of God. He's not setting up in heaven with a big club waiting to bash you. But you need to understand that that fear, the word can be translated to the same meaning of reverence. We need to be in awe of God when we walk in. Jesus was trying to tell them, you, you don't need to be afraid of God, but you need to reverence God. You don't need to be afraid of the things of this world. We're more afraid of a snake, I am, sometimes, than I am of God. And I have to work at reversing that. That my reverence of, uh, of, of God and who He is overcomes any and all circumstances that I face. And that, that has to be a, a, the controlling factor of what we do and, and what we're afraid of. Sometimes we're more afraid, and gee, that's why Jesus was speaking these. He says, do not fear those who kill the, the body and cannot kill the soul. We need to reverence God more than we do the things of this world. And what you reverence or oftentimes respect are those things which you're afraid of. Go ahead and pull that next one up. In the book of Acts, the Bible says that the church, as it was being born in the second chapter of verse, the last part of verse, uh, that chapter in verse 43, it says, And then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. In that same, that same source, in that same avenue, it wasn't a fear of going to church. It wasn't afraid of gathering together. And though there were many things that they were afraid of, because their very life could be taken if they were celebrating Jesus Christ, 
But I will tell you something. The fear that came over them was they were at awe with the amazing work of God. Amen? You want me to tell you something? If you've seen God do miracles in your life, you need to lift up your hands and be at all of his presence. You need to begin to say, God, you are awesome. You are wonderful. And that when we come into his presence, we come into the very presence of the throne room of God. It is, a, it is an awful thing that we would, we would ignore the very works. What are we afraid of? Let me, let, I asked you a few minutes ago to raise your hand if you were afraid of some things. Uh, some things that we are afraid of and that we become afraid of are, are simply this. And, and if you go ahead and pull those up, Robert, one at a time, it says, first of all, we are afraid of the unknown. What well, we don't know. How many of you, I know uh, I, one of the ladies was in here cleaning one, one day and it was real dark and, and she said, I'm okay if the lights are on, but if I can't see where I'm going, I get a little uh, worried because one time they were, they were up on the stage and we had a little snake crawl across there and we found a couple snakes on the property and, 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 and so sometimes we, we, I, I would be afraid of those, those things to where if I can't see or I don't know what's going to happen next. Do you know that that's what they do when they, when they capitalize on these houses of fear? I call them that. That's what they are. They basically find ways to make you scared. The lights will blink and then they'll go black and then you walk in and it scares you. When you can't see the hand in front of you, when you can't see what's going to happen next and then something happens next. How many of you know that Hollywood does that too? When they play that music, you know that something's about... Da -dum. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, you know that that shark is there. You're just waiting for that. Ah! And what the unknown is, is when is it going to happen? And how is it going to happen? But we don't know. So we become fearful of the unknown. Well, I mean, I, 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 my dad, we, we went to, and, and this was when I was, my wife and I hadn't been married too long. And both of our kids were uh, probably early ages. We were at Cherokee Village, and they had a big auditorium outside, and this lady was talking about how that she said snakes are so friendly, and they, 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 they are so, but they're, they're blind, and they use their tongue to, so they can see. That's what they see with, and they, and they have that, and, and she said, these snakes, they, 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 they're, they're not looking for you. They're, they sense your fear, and she said, I can tell you this is a harmless snake, and this snake was pretty good size and she put it down on the ground and she said see this snake will use its tongue to tell where it goes and when she put that snake down on the ground we were in the back row that snake Don I'm gonna tell you something if it couldn't see it smelled me because it made a beeline all the chairs and the, la the next thing I realized is I'm standing on the chair going it's coming after me <laughs> I didn't know what that snake was gonna do and she said that lady kept saying it's a friendly snake. There is no friendly snakes. Because I don't know what they're going to do. Number two, of the possibilities. What could happen? You know, we, we'll spend our time, and a lot of us are afraid of what's going to happen, and we worry ourselves sick, and we go through the possibilities of worrying so much so that, have you ever worried so much that you make yourself sick, and then whatever you were worried about didn't even happen? I've laid awake at night thinking, oh, Lord, i got to deal with it. Oh, no. I can't. It, somebody said, Pastor, I thought you were more spiritual than that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But there are times to when your spirit gets attacked because you're not sure what's going to happen next. You don't know what the possibilities could be. I mean, this could happen and this could happen and this could happen. What if this happens? Go ahead, pull the third one up. Of the untried. I never will forget. My son saw me. I was testing light sockets to see if they would work. And my sons, I have this little tool that you plug into the light socket and it will tell you whether that light socket is hot or not. And it, it, whether it's working. So my son saw me do that. So when he was at school, he decided that he was going to try that. So what he did, though, was he stuck a bobby pin into a socket and shorted out the whole side of that building, and they, it blew the, the thing, and, and so they called me from school. They had my son sitting there. They said, would you come and get Brandon? He has blacked out the entire school. <laughs> oh, great. 
He said, I just wanted to see what would happen, Dad. <laughs> Sometimes we've got to be concerned about we, if we don't know what could happen. We've never tried it before. Uh, come on. How many, of you, uh, uh, how many of you have ever bungee jumped before? No. Neither have I. Just telling you. But what people have told me that are that, are that silly to try that is, is that, you know, when you jump, the, the, the hardest part is to just get the courage to go off the edge. I'm thinking, what if I gained a few pounds and I missed it? <laughs> Instead of being 150, I'm now 250. And, you know, I could have been, and if I jump, and what happens if the string breaks? What happens if the guy forgot to tie the string? What if, what if my wife paid this guy to take... <laughs> I'm thinking of all those details that I get right on the edge and then I've never done this before so I get ready to and it, come on I, when, I, when I was working as a paint contractor and, and I, I, I've never been a contractor I worked with a guy and I helped him believe me I, I don't want to classify myself as any kind of paint but I he was up there and he it actually was trying to bail me out of, of, of some situations so he said come on I need you to help me paint he put me up on a gable end and I was painting over the top of it. It was on a tall ladder and I was sitting there and, and he said, just go ahead and brush the paint in along, along the fascia and underneath the eave there. So I'm up there painting and I've, I'm holding my paintbrush like this right here. <laughs> and I'm barely moving because I'm thinking this ladder is going to go and I'm going to die right here. The whole time I'm moving this little brush, I'm saying, oh God, if I did anything that might cause me not to go to heaven, Lord, take care of it. And I'm brushing real quick there, and, and I'm trying to do good, but because I want to, I want to do good, but, but, but I was afraid, because I'd never been up that high on a ladder before. And I'm sitting there holding on to the, the, and I'm, you know, doing that, and I'm covering, I've covered about that much space in about an hour and a half. So he walks up, Don, and he kicks the bottom of my ladder, scared me to death. I said, "What are you doing?" He said, I just want you to know that that ladder will hold you and you don't have to worry. He said, if you learn to trust what you know, you don't have to worry about what you don't know. And after I'd been painting for a while, I was able to do some painting. I can lean. Now, I, it's been a long time, so I, don't ask me to get up on top of the ladder and swing out again. But, but at that time, I, I got to where I could paint. And it didn't bother me. I could climb up and down the ladder and paint. And it didn't matter what I was hanging over. I didn't mind doing it. Number four, our imagination. It runs wild. It creates in us the diabolical demon works of this dark world. You know why? Our imagination is where Satan lies to us. He creates possibilities of things that could happen. The imagination is oftentimes the area where Satan lures us into our fears. And he brings us into this place to where we begin to be afraid of things because well, this, could, this could happen. I mean, and we begin to think about what could happen and our imagination begins to take us down paths of fear. That is exactly what they do in these haunted houses when you walk in. They, they, they paint it and picture it so that you could, you don't know what's going to happen next, but you know something's going to happen and you begin to create the opportunity for that. And, 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 and our imagination... You hear a chainsaw. Mm. It could just be a guy trimming a tree, but the next thing you know, you're awake. There's a lot of times that we, 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 our imagination is what affects us greatly. Uh, go ahead and pull that. What are we, why are we afraid? I, I want to look at this, and, and this is just a few minutes. If you're taking notes, you might want to write these things down. Why are we afraid? The first thing is, is that we put our trust in the wrong places. We don't trust, the Bible says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. You need to understand that we put our trust and our confidence and our faith is in something tangible that we know. Come on, amen. Some of us are afraid of losing our job. We're afraid of losing. Uh, our, our welfare, our benefits, or whatever it might be. We're afraid of losing all these things and because Satan has lied to us and our imagination begins to run wild and we put our trust in those things instead of God. And when you put your trust in God, you don't have to worry about what Satan tries to lie to you about. 
We need to put our trust and our confidence in God and have, have the confidence to know that he is in control. Secondly, we realize that we are, we are listening to Satan's lies. When he lures us and tempts us, he begins to lie to us. He's the father of lies. He will create in your mind his lie. And he will lure you to destroy you. And when we begin to listen to his lies, the imagination begins to run wild. And we begin to think about all the possibilities of what ifs and what could. And then those become lies and they become fears and they become those tangible things that create in us the fears. When we listen to Satan's lies, he begins to put that into our mind and he begins to paint that. That's why we see something. It begins to create fear. It begins to see that. My wife the other day, she was out getting some stuff out of the shed and, and, and we have a, a shed right beside our house and she's out there and she said she's tired of waiting on me cleaning that backyard up so she's going to do it, Chuck. She said she's going to take care of it. And she wasn't out there very long. All of a sudden, she comes banging in the door. I'm not going back out there again. I said, well, what's wrong? She said, I saw a snake. And she said it had a wiggly tail. And it went. I said, it's probably just a lizard. Of course, I didn't get up out of the chair. I just told her that you don't have to be afraid. Go ahead and get out there and go get it. And I said, you know, there's, there's really nothing out there. Sometimes we have to realize that Satan creates lies. And sometimes he uses that lie to convince us to trust in the things or the circumstances or our created fear more than we do. Now listen, I'm going to tell you something. When we listen to the lies of Satan, you don't, listen, I, I can tell you this. I was afraid to get up in front. I was afraid to talk. And I let that fear dictate to me for years. It wasn't until I said, God, I am not going to listen to that lie anymore. If you want me to speak your word, you'll give me the ability. You'll put the words in my mouth and I don't have to be afraid. And there's a lot of people that will listen to the lies of Satan and they won't tell somebody about Jesus Christ because they're afraid of, uh, of them. People will laugh at me. People will talk about me. People will think I'm strange. They already do anyways. What's the difference? Listen. Don't worry, don't listen to the lies of Satan. When God calls you and, and puts you in a position, trust in the Lord. Put your confidence in Him and His ability. Know that He will do that. Go ahead, last one. We let our imagination supersede our faith. Our faith becomes small. What if David would have said, Goliath is so big, I can't handle it. I think David went at the confidence that he said, I know I can't handle it. I know I can't do this. But he knew that his God was able to. You see, when our faith is bigger than our, our fears, we'll overcome those fears. When we, when we face a circumstance that's bigger and, and we face a situation that's bigger, uh, listen, uh, sometimes we've just got to push our fears aside and say our faith in, in God, our God is bigger than those circumstances. Our God is bigger than the details of the work of the, of the enemy. And when he lies to us and he begins to convince us of the falsehoods, we've got to begin to say, Lord, I have faith big enough in you. The next time Satan comes to you and tells you and creates a fear in you, you've got to create the God bigger than that fear. My God. Understand this, my God in you is big enough to overcome any works and lies of the enemy. The Bible says I can touch any deadly thing and it will not harm me. I was able to pick up that bowl of sauerkraut and throw it away. <laughs> Don was looking for who did it. I'll take the blame. That sauerkraut stunk. I could touch any deadly thing and it won't. I, I could, I, if, if God put me into a place to where I needed to handle a snake, I could do it. It would be a dead snake, but I would handle that snake. Here, I'm going to tell you something. And if you, if you just stop letting your imagination get the best of you. If you will stop letting Satan create these things in your mind. What could happen? What might happen? We'll be able to overcome it because God is able. How many of you realize what I'm saying today? My God can do anything, anything, yes, anything. My God can do anything. 
He made this earth with all its fullness and all that time shall bring. My God, he can do anything. Listen, I don't know about the circumstances. My God can move any mountain. My God can kill any giant. My God can, that song that they were singing about it, he can kick down doors and tear the walls down. He can go wherever that circumstance takes me. God is able. Amen. Amen. We've got a big God. Let's celebrate who he is. Go ahead. Birthed out of our fears comes worry and then worry to doubt. Fear in itself is not a sin. Amen? But when we are afraid of it to the fact of where it begins to create doubt and we begin to worry about it, it can become sin. Amen? And when we begin to look at that and we begin to think about this, this statement there, it says birthed out of our fears birthed out of what we, we seem to be afraid of, it can hinder us from ever trusting God to, to do a complete work. And that, that's what Satan tries to do. He tries to limit our faith and control our faith and create that fear so that we're worried and we doubt and we wonder, God, when are you going to? Anybody ever been there before? He said, God, when are you going to do this? How are you going to do this? And we begin to look at the possibilities of maybe he won't ever do it. Instead of realizing God is already at work. He's already doing something. He's already working on the scenes. He's already ready to do something. You see, the power of God and the presence of God brings us to the understanding that God can do anything. My God is able. How do we overcome our fears? I told you I was going to bring you to this. We've got to look at this. How, how can we overcome it? The first thing that we realize is we've got to put our trust in the Lord. We've got to put our confidence in God and out, let it go. I'm about to bro break into Frozen. you got to let the fears go. you got to let them go. When I was a young dad, I remember my daughter Brittany had uh, asthma really bad. One time she had a, a fever that spiked and she was very scared uh, and she was running a fever and she laid down between my wife and I and, and, and I was sitting there dreaming and, and, and Satan, sometimes he will use your dream time because God likes to use your dream time too because he'll speak to you sometimes in those. But Satan likes to use them too to lie to you. And I never will forget because Satan took my fear and he twisted it to a greater place. All of a sudden, I woke up and my daughter Brittany was screaming, there's snakes in the bed, there's snakes in the bed. Well, who do you think originated that lie? I knew there were no snakes in that bed. But when she started screaming, I jumped up out of bed. And I'd be, what, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? In her fever, she was, she was just basically in, in, a, in a state of uh, almost of shock. And she began to scream about that. And you know what? The first thing I did was jumped out of fear. But then faith kicked in. And I picked my baby girl up and I began to walk up and down that hallway of our trailer and I began to sing, uh, God, uh, right now we bind you, Satan, and we bind the works that you bring against her. And I began to sing that song, you know, I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord to lay down your weapons and flee. And I began to walk up and down that hallway and I began to sing. My wife looked at me and she goes, we're taking her to the hospital because her fever's not coming down. And by the time we got to the hospital, her fever had already begun to break and the, what they, gave, they started working on some medicine. But I'm going to tell you something. When you put your fear out and you put faith in, God takes over. Amen. You've got to begin to say, God, I am not afraid of what man can bring against me for God is able. We put our trust in the Lord. Secondly, we realize to overcome our fears. Look at these scriptures. It says it in Proverbs 3 and 5. I've been quoting this all morning, but I, just so you'll know where it is. In Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Go ahead and pull that next one up. In Isaiah 12 and 2, it says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. Underline that part. I will not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength. And my song, he is also become my salvation. When we overcome our fears, we see Satan push back and faith takes over and God moves on the scene. God will let us go to places to where our faith is challenged because he wants us to increase our faith and confidence in him. So we'll take it out of our hands 
and out of our hearts and out of our minds and we walk by faith and not by sight. And we begin to put, we begin to say, God, I can do this. I can do this. I trust in you, Lord. I trust in you, Lord. Go ahead and pull the next one up. Overcoming our fears. We must learn to stand on the promises of God. When we learn to stand on the promises of God, we know that God can do anything. Standing on the promises is an old song that we used to sing. Because I've already sung once, I won't do it again. But you can stand on the promises of God and every word and letter in that book. Every promise of God is for every believer and every child of God. He didn't select one or two for me and, and a few for you. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. Every promise is for every believer. The sad thing is, is we don't read it enough to know what his promises are for us. We don't, we don't realize all those promises that God has made for us. Are, all we have to do is accept them and receive them and thank him for them. Amen? Look at the, the scripture says, For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. In James, the fourth chapter, verse 7, it says, Therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The hardest part for us is to, that, that narrow line where it says to resist the devil. We want to know how much we can play with the devil and not cross that line. We, how, how far can I go, God, and still walk in obedience to you? The Bible says resist the devil. That means to turn away strongly. And I'm going to tell you something. If, if I sense the presence of evil or the work of God, I turn away from it. Come on, amen? I don't have to, I don't want to watch some TV show that creates fear. I have people tell me all the time, why don't you want to watch a, a scary movie with me, <clears throat> Joey? And I say, <laughs> I live in a world that's exhausted around me with fear. I walk in the hospital to see some of the most atrocious things. I've seen people's lives tore up. I've seen people's uh, hearts being opened. I don't have to watch it on TV. Because all that does is work on my mind and my imagination and creates a fear that Satan can use to destroy me. I walk with the Lord and not with the dead. Amen? Some of you will get that reference later. I don't have to walk in fear if I walk in obedience. When I stand upon the promises of God, I know his power and his ability to overcome. I know his word that he gives me, that he will never leave me, nor forsake, that he'll supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. By his strong arm, he will supply and take care of me. Listen, I don't know about you, but every time the lie of the enemy comes, I've got to throw the word back at him. I've got to throw the word back at him because those promises are for me. And if you don't have them already underlined in your Bible, go to the bookstore or go online and order one of the promise books that has all the promises of God for you and take that and put it by your Bible and start underlining them. And they go by categories. And you can go there and you can start cross-referencing it and you can start saying, I, this, is, this is not of God. The Bible says God gives me a spirit of love and of joy and of a sound mind. Turn to that person beside you and say, listening of a sound mind, a spirit of love, a spirit of joy. I, I think that sometimes we live below that because we let fear overcome us. We're afraid of what somebody might think. We, we, it, it, it inhabits every part of our life. You know that? There are some people who are afraid to lift their hands in church because they're afraid somebody might think they're fanatics clap their hands to worship the Lord. There are some people that, that, that the reason that they have trouble moving in the Spirit and the Holy Spirit moving on them is because they're afraid. I tell you what, I think I'm, I, I want to I say, God, I, I'm so overwhelmed by your presence. I can't help but worship you. I can't help but give you thanks. I can't help but lift my hands up and my heart's up. Amen. I just can't. I, I can't. When God begins to move and he begins, when, when, when God's Holy Spirit begins to move in a place, it just, I forget everything else. I'll tell you one last story. I was at a minister's meeting in Payson. All kinds of different ministers from different denominations were there. And they began to pray. And you know, 
in, in, the, in that setting, you're supposed to be quiet and reverenced and pray those quiet prayers. And everybody was at the, and they were all kind of quietly talking amongst themselves. And when they were, when they were doing that, the Holy Spirit began to move in me, Don. And the Holy Spirit began to churn in me. And it would have been good for me to let the fear inhabit my praises, but I pushed those fears aside and I said, God, you are faithful. And you were true. And I began to worship him. And I began to lift up my hands and my heart before the Lord. And the next thing I know, I was praising God with my hands lifted up. And I was just uh, praying out loud. And, and I was praying in tongues. And, and when I, I, I put my hands down and, Lord, and I looked and everybody at the whole, the whole place was looking right at me. And I said, I just love to love God. I said, if that bothers you, I'm sorry. But I love to love God. And that's my worship to him. And when I began to say that, it wasn't long after that that a minister from Payson area came to me and, and said, that stuff, that, that praying in tongues, he said, I've been seeking after that. He said, my wife and I have been praying for that. We're trying to understand that a little bit more. He was from another denomination and he didn't understand it. But because I let the Holy Spirit speak through me and move on me and I wasn't intimidated by the fear of that room or that moment, the power of God, that man went home and he began to pray and he began to seek God. Him and his wife were both filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They began to speak in tongues. They didn't exactly understand it and they didn't know how they were going to tell their church. But the day that they overcame their fear and they stood up and they told their church what had happened, more than half the church said, Pastor, the same things happened to us. There was a move of God in the presence of God. Sometimes if we'll just push our fears aside, and see God, he will do the most miraculous things. I can shake off the, the situations and circumstances. I can, I can move forward with the presence and power of God. Let's overcome our fears of what Satan tries to lie to us with and, and, and give God the glory that he so deserves. If, if I don't have to be afraid of, of the circumstances of this world, but I do need to understand my reverence for God. Amen? To worship Him in spirit and truth. To give Him the glory that He so needs. A couple verses that I wanted to share with you to close was this. One of my favorite passages of Scripture is in Joshua. The first part of Joshua when he's trans transitioning from being a follower and an associate of Moses to the leading role. To command the children of Israel to move into their promise. God speaks to to Joshua and tells him this in the first chapter of Joshua. I want you to, I'll read this scripture. It says, be strong and, and of good courage for this people you shall divide and as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. The next verse says in verse 7 says, only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do all according to the law which Moses my servant commanded you to do. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go and God that wasn't enough to say it twice he said it once he tells him again the third time in verse 9 go ahead he says I have have I not commanded you be strong in the Lord and be of good courage do not be afraid nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You don't have to be afraid. Fear is a work and a lie of the enemy. I am more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens me. I am an overcomer. And if you believe with me, if you accept and walk in that, the confidence you can walk in is that fear is defeated and faith will increase.